The Israelites had been held in bondage in Egypt, in forced labor camps for a long period of time. God spoke to Moses. Moses was able to free them from their bondage. They moved across the Red or Reed Sea and into the wilderness, some 600 plus thousand of them. And soon, they were running short on supplies. The people began complaining to God that there was no food to eat, there was no water to drink. That complaining got worse. Moses went to God and had a conversation, and God responded to the needs of God's people. I invite you to hear the Word of God as recorded in Exodus chapter 16, beginning with the 14th verse. When the layer of dew lifted, there were on the surface of the wilderness a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. And when the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. These are the words of God for all of God's children. Thanks be to God. May we bow our heads in prayer. Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts as we're assembled for worship this day, may they be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength, our rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. Traveling to Yeager, West Virginia this past week for the mission trip brought back a lot of memories of many years spent in West Virginia. I thought fondly about summer vacations when my brother and I spent the summer on Grandpa and Grandma's small farm in Cameron, West Virginia. Those were wonderful days, days of simple living. I remember waking up in the morning to the aromas that came from Grandma's kitchen, fresh baked bread, maybe bacon frying in an old iron skillet. Those smells came rushing up the steps, and it would just wake us up, and we'd be ready to eat. Grandma always had a variety of things to eat at breakfast. Breakfast was the most important meal of the day, she would tell us. And amid the variety of foods there on the table, each and every morning, there was one staple sitting there in the middle of that table, a large bowl, in it a white substance that today we call grits. We had plain grits, we had grits with real butter. We had cheese grits, we even had grits with bacon crumbled up in them. And these weren't instant grits. These were grits that Grandma cooked on the stove for 20 minutes, or at least until that time when those grits were swimming in their own gravy. That's some good stuff there. My brother and I loved those grits, but, but we really didn't know what it was that we were eating. So one day we asked Grandpa, I said, what is this? Grandpa said, you don't know what that is? You don't know what grits are made of? No, Grandpa, what is this? Grandpa said, let me tell you what it is. Grits are small bugs that live in colonies on the surface of a pond. And in the fall, they scrape the bugs off the top of the water they shell them, and they set them out to dry. And as they dry, Grandpa told us, they begin to turn white. And, and the processors know when to package these grits when they turn totally white and the legs fall off. <laughs> it was in that moment that my brother and I fully understood why my parents never had grits on the table <laughs> at home. I think of that story, that experience, every time I read the word manna in Scripture. Because manna and grits, fine, flaky, granular, white, neither one have any value as a leftover. 
the people are to go out and they are to gather manna each day. That's the instruction of God to Moses. Each person is to gather two quarts of manna and no more than that because if you gather more